One of my favorite tools that exists in Linux is the snapshot tool that is provided by MX Linux. This thing is amazing. It's like one of those tools that you just know should be ex in every single Linux distribution out there because everyone that has used Linux before has reached Linux perfection. They have gone through and they've set up their, their distro the exact way they want it. They have all their wallpapers, all their configuration files, literally everything. It's working exactly they want the way they want it. And eventually, things get cluttered or something goes wrong and it crashes and you have to start over again. That's just the nature of computing. But what if I told you there was a way to go through and create a snapshot of that perfect moment, that w that perfect Linux install, the, the pinnacle of Linux evolution, if you will, that moment that you've worked so hard for to get Linux to be exactly the way you want it. You can save that on an ISO and then install it not only, again, on your main computer, but on every computer that you own, and it will be exactly the same. That's the promise of the MX Snapshot tool, and it works. So today I'm going to show you how to use it, and then we're going to go through and reinstall MX Linux using my ISO. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is actually be inside of your MX Linux install. And this is mine. And I'm not done too much to it. I have i3 installed on it. And I've messed around with it quite a bit. It's one of those VMs that I've just kind of kept around for a long time because I like MX Linux so much. So what we're going to do now is just change some things up so that you know that when we reinstall this thing from the ISO that we're going to create, that it's actually my ISO. So the first thing we're going to do is create a folder. So we're going to go create folder, and then this is a test, and then we'll do OK, and then I'll move this up here. OK, and then we're going to change the wallpaper. So we'll change the wallpaper to this one here, and then apply. That way, when we reinstall it, if it doesn't look exactly like this, you'll know that I've been cheating. And I don't want you to think I've been cheating. So uh, this is what we should get once we've run the snapshot tool and reinstalled, or at least booted into the live environment of our brand new ISO that has maintained exactly what we have here. So in order to run the MX snapshot tool, it's really easy. So you go to the start menu. Now, if you are on a different version of MX that has a different desktop environment, it may be in a different place, but you can, should just be able to search for snapshot if you can spell, which I apparently can't. And then you'll be, it'll be asked for your administrator passwords. So enter your password. And here's where you have some options. Okay, so first off, you can you can set where you want the snapshot to be stored. In this case, it's going to be stored in the home directory, not the user's home. You know, not it's just slash home, not slash home slash username slash something. It's just the home directory. Uh, that tripped me up a little bit because I wasn't reading it the first time I did it. And then you can name the ISO. So I'm going to name this my ISO and then we're hit next okay and then this is the second page there's not a lot here that you'll probably want to do because chances are if you're doing this you want everything on that ISO but if you have a ton of stuff in your home directory like a ton of music or your ton of pictures or whatever you may not want all that stuff included in the ISO it's up to you whether or not you do it's going to really depends on how big of a USB key you have or how good your internet is because eventually you're going to have to download this somewhere or transfer it somewhere you know keep in size that the more stuff you have on here the bigger it's going to be so this first section here will allow you to go through and exclude things from the iso that you may not necessarily want so probably if you're going to be using your iso that you create on another network you probably won't want the network stuff also, if you're going, you're planning on handing your ISO on a USB key to somebody else, you probably want don't want all this stuff because it might contain personal information. Uh, that's why this last option here is kind of cool because you can go through and choose between either preserving all accounts, so every user account, including their home directories, or resetting the account so that there's no accounts on the ISO at all. Uh, per personally, I don't really get that second part because then why would you not just use a fresh ISO to begin with from MX, you know? But I'm sure there are reasons that I'm just not thinking. This this middle part here is about compression. I would just leave that alone. That's what I've been doing. Messing with it might end up doing something weird, and I just don't want to do that. So after that, you just hit Next and hit OK. And then it's going to sit here and actually make the ISO. It'll take three or four minutes, depending on what you have on your hard drive. 
whatever it's got to compress, the more stuff it's got to compress, the longer it's going to take. So for me, it's only going to take three or four minutes because there's not a lot of stuff here. But if you have a lot more and you're including that in the ISO, it will take a little bit longer. So I'm going to cut the video here and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, once that is done, you'll get this little pop-up. And it basically just says it's been su completed successfully. If it fails, it'll say that something went wrong and it should give you an error code of some kind and maybe even tell you exactly what was wrong. It also tells you how long it took to finish, which is a minute and 24 in this case. So it didn't take very long for me at all. So you just hit OK. Now, if you're running this on hardware, you can go through and use something like Etcher or the MX Linux USB Live tool to go through and put this on a USB key. For me, I'm using this in a VM and getting files off from a VM can be uh, stupid. To, to you know, It's just there are too many ways of doing it and there's not many very many good ones that are easy to set up without you know setting it up properly and I didn't want to do that so uh, I actually went through and uploaded it to Google Drive and then downloaded it to Google Drive and that was a, a, a pain in the ass and probably the stupidest way to do it but it doesn't matter it's done so what I'm going to do now is actually show you the live environment of my ISO that we just created okay so here we are in VirtualBox and I've set up the virtual machine and I've uploaded the ISO that I just created. It was around 3.2 gigabytes or so. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And we should log into to our version of MX Linux. Now, here's where we know that this is actually my ISO that I created because it has my password on it. So I just type in my password and hit enter. And it will actually go through and log in. And here we are, as you can see. We have, this is a test up here. We have the wallpaper we set. That's because this is the ISO in my entire system that I put on that ISO. And that's awesome, right? So I could take this ISO, put it on a USB key, which I didn't actually do yet, and put it on that computer behind me if I wanted to. And that means that if I go through and say, have a whole bunch of my window managers and stuff installed on this ISO and I wanted to use one, I could do so. So for example, I had Sway on that machine that we clone, that we use the snapshot shot tool on. And now I have logged into Sway because Sway is also on this ISO. And so I could go through and install all of my particular window managers and all my configuration files and get them all set up in place use that snapshot tool and then transfer it to another computer or just save it for someday when you know this computer decides to die or this install decides to die and reinstall it how cool is that so i have heard from some people that they have experienced errors so i'm not sure what those errors were i, I didn't get the details so i would just make sure that you're not relying on this to back up your files back up your files in other ways because this may or may not work for larger systems. I'm not sure that that's the case. I just wanted to let you know that I have heard from a couple people who have had problems with this, but I've used it now three or four times and I haven't had any problems at all. Granted, they are on smaller systems, but it does seem to transfer over literally everything. Any files that you create, any files that you have, any window managers that you've installed, so all the X sessions and stuff like that that you have are just there. I mean, as I showed you, that sway on the ISO that we created with a, with a wallpaper that I downloaded like ages and ages ago. So before we end the video, what I'm going to do is take you through an installation of the ISO that we just created so that you can see that it works and that it's not any different than what you do if you just want to install MX Linux the regular way. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are in the Sway version of our MX Linux install. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, actually, you know, I have no clue how to exit out of Sway, to tell you the honest God truth. So we're going to have to figure that out first. Okay, now that I've figured that out, it's basically the same as i3. They just added sh the shift mod modifier to it instead of just being mod E. But anyways, um, we'll go ahead and log into Plasma here so that I can actually do this th the regular way, if I if it will let me. There we go. And now we can go through it and then enter into Plasma. And uh, this obviously was not supposed to be this difficult. But anyways, we're here. We just click on the installer. And then we go through and just it's just like a regular MX Linux install. So we go hit next. Uh, we want all this stuff be, to be the exact same as it is. And hit OK, yes. 
and then next and then enter the computer name we're just going to leave all the stuff the exact same because that's what it was before and then we can pretty much leave all this stuff it should be exactly the same it shouldn't have changed any of the settings from your previous install it should be exactly the same hit next and then just wait for it to install that's literally it well i'll go ahead and cut the video here and then come back when it's done it's not going to take very long and it's done it literally took about i don't know two minutes that was all there was to it so we're going to hit finish and it's going to reboot and i believe it will re it will remove the iso and boot into the system i may be wrong sometimes virtualbox does that sometimes it doesn't uh, why it's not consistent i've never been able to figure that out some distros do some distros don't so here we go and yeah we're right there we'll wait for it to log in or, or load up here password and it should be the exact same system we were on just a second ago wallpaper that file that we created everything and it's installed to the system so we're no longer in the iso we can tell that because there's no uh, actually it looks like we are in the uh, iso let's let me go look at this uh no we're not it's the the drive empty i don't know why the installer is still there because we're not in the iso that's a little weird but yeah um anyways so that is the MX snapshot tool. It is probably the most useful Linux tool that I've ever encountered because it's the possibilities are just enormous. Create yourself a USB key with this, with your particular brand of MX Linux on it, with all your stuff on it, and you have that with you in your pocket wherever you go. And MX has an option for persistent boot. So you could go through and enable persistent boot in the grub menu. I believe you press S5, F5 during that group, that grub menu option, or when that grub menu is up, you press F5 and uh, you enter the persist all, I think is the, the option that you want. And you can go through then and use that in the live environment and it will be persistent. You can make changes to everything that you want and just use it. That is so cool. Or you can have this as a backup for when things go wrong. Or you can use it to transfer and install to other computers. There's just so many things that this enables. And I can't even get over it. It's just so cool. It's one of, like I said before, it's one of those tools that make you want to use a distro. Because it, it makes you know that the developers are very interested in doing cool things a lot of distros just exist you know they they create an installer for arch linux or whatever and they're just there there's nothing wrong with it but it doesn't show passion and i know that every time i do an mx video i kind of gush over it i can't help it i really like mx linux honestly if i wasn't so attached to the aur it would be my daily driver that's how good it is uh, so that is it for us th on this video. If you have questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L, Primus, Sid A, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, F Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Emma, Teus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The BSDs, Rock, and Peter Ray. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.